Hi, welcome to the keying and transparency section of the After Effects basic training series. What I have here is a blank composition with this piece of footage of our action star pretending like he gets, I don't know, shot or blown up. And what we can do is key out the green and put something else behind him. Now, of course, an effect like this could take hours, but I'm just going to kind of quickly run through the basics. So with the layer selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Keying, Key Light. And this is After Effects Keying plugin for green and blue screens. And what you do is use the screen color to click on the green. And that gets rid of most of the green. We can turn on this toggle transparency switch. Now we see we have a bunch of stuff in here that shouldn't be. And we can go down to the screen mat options and just increase the clip black and you know decrease this we can also increase the gain a little bit anyway you can actually check out a more advanced tutorial on this at videocopilot.net but as you can see this plugin will key out green or blue now we do have another problem is this stuff in the background so to get rid of that we're gonna use a mask and a mask is basically a cookie cutter. So if I shut off the key light plugin for a second, I'm gonna come up to our tool palette. I'm gonna take the pen tool and I'm just gonna draw a shape. And as you can see, when I close that shape, everything outside of it gets cut off. And this is called a mask. Now, if I toggle down the layer properties, we now have a mask added and we can look at it and there are a few properties to this mask. Now first of all there is the mask path and that is the shape that we can then adjust and move around. We also have feathering which can be increased to soften the edges of the selection. This doesn't necessarily have to be used with green screen. You can use this to make a photo montage or a video montage and soften the edges of your pictures. Just try to think of the uh, possibilities with these masks. There's also the opacity and the expansion. So the expansion will kind of grow the bounds or shrink them if you would like that. Now these parameters have a stopwatch which means they are key frameable. So I could set the keyframe for the mask path, move forward a bit, and take the selection tool and just adjust these mask points. Then if I play this back you can see those points kind of adjust. So kind of a helpful thing um, that I'm sure you will use in the future. But for now, I'm gonna select the mask and hit delete. Now, what I wanna use the mask for is to get rid of some of this background stuff in our helper right here on the side. So if I turn key light back on, I can take the pen tool and click around the edges and basically draw a shape around what we don't want to include in the shot. This is also called a garbage mask and that basically cuts out everything that's not inside of this shape. Now taking out the background is the first part of a shot like this. Now we want to add something to the background so if I go to my project window go down to my action movie essentials collection and this is a collection of action stock footage that you can find at videocopilot.net, one of our products. And inside of here are some explosions. And we can take one of these explosions, say uh, the explosion one, and drag it underneath this Tino movie. And if we go to right here when he gets blown up, we can then line this explosion up, scale it up, And so we've sort of created a basic composite of this explosion. Now, of course, we would want to finesse this and make it more impactful, but you get the basic idea of compositing. You have layers on top of other layers, and some of them have transparency, some of them don't. Other things I want to talk about is transparency. Here's our footage of our action star. Now, I'm going to go into another one of our products called Riot Gear. And Riot Gear is sort of organic stock footage, paint effects, and ink and things. And I'm going to go into our paint splatter effects. And I'm going to take our first paint splatter and just drag it out to our comp. And as you can see, it's basically paint kind of thrown onto the screen. 
and you can see the background is black and the inside is white. Now, before we get into that, I want to talk about transfer modes. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, you're probably familiar with transfer modes. And transfer modes are basically different ways to blend with the layers beneath it. Now if you hit F4 on the keyboard, that brings up the transfer modes. You can also click on the toggle switches button and that'll bring up these if they're not already up. Now we can change the transfer mode to multiply. And what that does is basically shows through anything that is white. Or you can change it to screen, which does the opposite of that. So all the black sort of gets keyed out and now we have just the white. I recommend you kind of go through them and play with them and kind of see what they do exactly. But that's one way you can actually composite in After Effects. Now it works even better if you're using say a texture. So if I shut the paint off for a second, I can go into our texture collection from Riot Gear and I can take one of these textures and drag it onto our clip. In this case it's this wall. Well if I change the transfer mode to multiply, you see we sort of added a texture over our movie and only the dark stuff is showing through. Or screen will kind of show just the uh, brighter areas. Overlay sort of does a mixture of uh, both of those. Okay now let's talk about a real important function called the track mat function. You can see it right here and what the track mat function allows you to do is add transparency to a layer that doesn't already have a transparent track. So in this case, everything is opaque. There, if I turn on the transparency switch, we don't see anything. Now, if I go into my Riot Gear effects, and let's go to my ink drops. And if I take my first ink drop and drag it out, you see this is basically a clip of ink being dropped into a fish tank, basically. And it's perfectly matted, so we have black in the background, and white in the foreground. Now what we can do with this Tino layer is set the track mat so that it uses this layer, the layer directly above it, as the transparency source. So with the Tino layer selected, you hit F4, this brings up the track mat option. You can also toggle it like I showed you earlier. And what I can do is change the track mat from nothing to Luma Mat drop one. And what that does if I turn on my transparency switch, is anything that is black is transparent and anything that is white shows through. Now, I can go into this drop layer, choose effect, color correction, curves, and I can brighten it, just blow it out really bright, see like that? Then if I shut the layer off, you'll see that my footage beneath it shows through a lot clearer, and that's because semi-transparent stuff sort of see through. Now of course I can scale this layer up as well and that'll show through more of our character. I can also go to my Tino layer and invert the mat so that we sort of cut out everything but this layer. Now for this shot it's probably better if we use something else instead of this green screen footage. So I'm gonna go to my images and I'm gonna replace the cloud footage with this Tino layer. Now here's a great tip. If you select a layer in the timeline, you can replace it by grabbing something else, holding down Alt, and dropping it right on top of it. And you'll see it basically replaces it. That's a very helpful tip you're definitely going to find useful. So now you can see we've cut out the middle of this cloud layer. And we can then put footage underneath the cloud layer and kind of it shows through. So what we have is the clouds on top of this girl and we're using this ink drop as sort of the transparency for it. Let's see, we could sort of frame this up even so that you know our girl's just looking just through the ink drop or even rotate the ink drop so that she's right in the middle of it. So something to think about Obviously this is speculative training and not my favorite kind of training. I don't like to be telling you how things can be used. I prefer to show you actual real world examples and show you how this tool is used to achieve a specific effect. But with basic training, I think the idea is to get an understanding of the program and just sort of see the possibilities 
not so much actually, okay, I know how to use the program now because experience is the key. And also, while you're watching this, you know, I recommend you think about other ways you can use these techniques. It's like, here is this filter, you know, what other ways can you use it for? So that's, uh, that's definitely something you want to be thinking about. For example, I just thought of something, um, sort of an outside of the box thought that might come in handy. So what I'm going to do is take our Tino fall layer and drag it out again. So here's our green screen footage. And just as I did before, I'm going to key out the green. King, key light. Select the green. We'll select the darker area. And just kind of make an adjustment to this. Then we're going to take the pen tool. And I'm going to cut out the outer stuff so that we just focus on our main character, just like we did before. And now what I'm going to do is use his video as a track mat for our clouds. So how am I going to do that? Well, take the cloud layer and put it underneath the Tino layer. So that's what it would look like normally. And I'll just delete these other layers for right now. So he's just walking out in front of the clouds. Pretty cool. But if I take the clouds and change the track mat to alpha mat, that's going to use this layer's alpha. And now that we've applied the king to it, it has an alpha channel. It's not a luma channel, it's an alpha channel. So if we set it to a luma channel, you see we just get the highlighted areas that come in and the dark areas get cut out just like a normal um, you know, track mat. But if you use the alpha mat or the alpha mat inverted, you can see we actually can kind of create a vignette of our character kind of walking out. And that's pretty interesting, especially if you're looking, you know, that iPod look, uh, you could uh, make a new solid from the layer menu, make it black, or, yeah, you know, let's see, make it black, and make a new layer that is, you know, uh, purple. Put the purple layer in the background put the black layer underneath the Tino layer and set the black layers track mat to alpha mat. And what that does is uses the Tino dancing around as a mat. And so now you see him doing his thing, you know, and you sort of have that silhouette look. So that's what track mats are all about. It's all about transferring transparency from one source to another. And another final touch we could add is by creating a new black solid and choosing OK what I can do is add a nice vignette around the edges and what we'll do is take the ellipse tool and just draw a shape around the mask so now we've created a circle around this black layer then if we subtract the mask then we have sort of a black bounds Then if we bring the mask properties up I can feather the mask out and then expand it inward or outward. In this case, we'll expand it outward. And so now we have sort of a nice soft edge around uh, you know, the outside of this, this file. And you know, that looks pretty good. We have a little extra stuff here. And you know, again, I'm just uh, demonstrating things. But you can clean that up using uh, some of the functions in the keying options. So please check out some of the more advanced tutorials at videocopilot.net. And uh, hopefully this gives you sort of a foundation for transparency and working with King inside of After Effects.